Hi there. This is Eric Dick. I'm CEO of iStack Training. I also host a podcast called The Robust Marketer. And I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, hosting a very special uh, interview series with some of the top e-commerce people in the space. We've rented this uh, beautiful space here. I kind of feel like Oprah on her couch. Uh, we're going to do some, some in-depth interviews with some really interesting e-commerce personalities and uh, I'm really excited for it. We have, we have some really exciting things happening uh, over the, this summer, basically, in the e-commerce space and we're going to be revealing to you a little bit about our plans, uh, a little bit about the people we're going to be working with and uh, like I say, I'm, I'm super excited. I think e-commerce is obviously the, the opportunity of a generation and uh, the people that I'm going to talk with today are sort of living uh, embodiment of, of that truth. And uh, so to start with, I would like to introduce probably uh, one of the, the, the more well-known people in the, uh, the e-commerce space, and that would be Nick Peroni. So Nick, uh, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it's great Pleasure to have to you here. here. Nick Peroni is a, uh, an e-commerce entrepreneur. Um, he has produced multiple sort of seven-figure e-commerce ventures, but he's probably best known for his role in building and scaling e-commerce empires. So, E-commerce empires, I think, is, is you know, I, I see all these groups out there. I, I see everyone. I see the way that people interact in these groups. I see the, the, the questions that, that ask, and I see the, the leaders in those groups, uh, you know, the amount to which that they're willing to, to put into them, put of themselves into their groups, and nobody is doing more than Nick for their group, I think. It's one of the best learning environments for e-commerce. It's almost 60,000 members strong, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I met Nick last year at our, at our event, Facebook Mastery Live. We hit it off. Uh, he's one of the most genuine people I've met, uh, and I'm super happy to have him here in Atlanta for this interview. Welcome. Thank you, man. Thank you. Very nice words. I appreciate that. It's yeah, a pleasure to be here. I, I I appreciate working with you, and and it, you know it was fun. We had you up on stage a little bit last year at Facebook Mastery Live, mm -hmm. and then we closed down the party. Yeah, uh, and stayed and <laughs> at they made the end, it, they made us all kick the us wine out. bottles. <laughs> all the wine bottles that we bought that we tried to drink, we couldn't quite get through them. Yeah, uh, but it was a lot of fun. So. Why don't you tell, I gave you a little bit of an intro there, but why don't we start with uh, you telling us a little bit about your Marketer's Heroes journey. How did you get started in e-commerce and what has it been like for you? How did you get to where you are today? Yeah, it was a fantastic intro. I really appreciate that. Um, I got started kind of traditionally where a lot of people do in the terms of websites, like niche websites back before I really knew about e-commerce as it is right now with Shopify and drop shipping and this whole uh, craze that's out there right now. And so like a lot of people trying to make money online, I struggled, failed, tried things, worked it out. Um, and in the end, when I ended up discovering Shopify and things started to really take off for me, I had some success before that, but with Shopify, things started to really take off and do well. And then for me, I've always had like this, this inner desire to really want to have an impact and teach and to help other people because I remember what that struggle was like getting started, trying to find somebody that could just point me in the right direction, that could just help me out a little bit um, and not really being able to get that. So that was a big thing for me when I started to have some success and I started to see some things working. I wanted to help others do that as well, not in a way to like, oh, look at me, but to actually be like, hey, look, I found something that's working and this is really a system that anybody can use to do the same thing. Uh, and so that's kind of where Ecom Empires and the whole idea for that started. And since then, yeah, it's been amazing. Almost 60,000 members now. I've been traveling and doing masterminds and I got to meet you uh, as part of traveling and, and being part of these events. So it's, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. So talk about your life a little bit right now. So like you, you, you get up in the morning, you're at a, your home base is in Manila? Is that right? Mm, well, I guess you could say, I mean, I've been in the Philippines so much, you could probably say that. But I mean, my home base is still here in America. Uh, I have a condo outside of DC in Maryland. But um, yeah, I mean, my life, the last eight months I've been home, like maybe a total of six weeks scattered in yeah. between there in like that eight months since I've started the worldwide e-com tour, um, which is where I'm traveling and doing events, whether I'm attending or speaking or hosting masterminds. Um, that's kind of what my life is like right now. It's really more dream than reality these days. I'm just traveling, meeting people, and then helping others work on their business and create these types of e-com success stories. Awesome. Give me a rundown. If, you, if I flip through your passport right now, what, where, where are the, the last places you've sort of been in the past six months? Uh, Philippines, India, Romania, um, Indonesia, and uh, Vietnam, Japan, 
a lot of Southeast, a lot of like Southeast Asia countries is where I kind of started because people are so hungry in that part of the world. It's such an emerging economy right now in Asia for e-commerce. So that's where I, I focused a lot of my attention getting started with some of these masterminds. I think the cool thing about your masterminds are that they've got to be some of the more accessible masterminds out there, right? You mm, do them at a, at a pretty good rate. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're really like, you know, the, the selflessness that you approach this enterprise with was what, one of the things that really first drew me to you actually. And so, and I, and I think what you're doing, you're serving a lot of markets that are fairly underserved. There's probably not a lot of other people putting on these high-end masterminds in, in a lot of these places. Which mm -hmm. has been, which places have been like the most receptive to, to your teachings and your, what you've been bringing? Yeah, all, all of them have been great. Honestly, the, the cool thing about these events is you always meet a new group of people. It's a different dynamic and like new things happen during that event that you wouldn't have expected that just comes from the energy created there. But uh, the Philippines has probably been the most receptive and the most fun and just kind of turned out the best. I've, I've done three masterminds now and I'm going back, well, one mastermind, two workshops, um, and I'm going back again at the end of June for another one we're doing on an island, we're calling it Ecom Island. Um, and so I guess most receptive, in a way, they've all been very receptive, but Philippines are really hungry right now for these types of events. We, you know, the, the ISAC team, uh, we have a, a large team of designers and developers and social media market, marketers in Manila. There, there's something about the sort of Filipino culture that just, that they're, they're hustlers. Mm -hmm. They're sort of like, they're, they're, they're sort of American influenced, I think, a lot. And so there's, there's a real sense of hustle there. Is that, is that something you're seeing? Yeah, well, you know, Manila, like they say, it's kind of like going to America in a way. Like it's very much reminds you of an American city. But yeah, one of the reasons I really liked the Philippines is because they do know the skill sets. Most the Philippines is the largest VA country, you know, out there. And they know, they know how to do all these tasks separate but they've never really seen like the whole thing together. Um, and now with the opportunity as it is with global e-commerce, you know, a lot of people I know are doing very well in the Philippines and like, same thing with Vietnam. Vietnam has been very receptive. Um, I've been there a couple times. Like they're really smart. They're really on their hustle and very hungry. And when they see the system, they're good at it and like they know how to do it. Nice. So when you give your system uh, and you, you talk to people at, the, at these live events, what are the areas that you see the most like head nodding in? Like when, when people really grasp it, is it, is it sort of they're blown away by the whole thing or what aspect of your system that you teach do you think really wows people the most in, in your experience? Uh, I think there's a couple things. On a very simple level, I think that people are, there's a lot of like aha moments when you start to show them the inner workings of stores that are doing really well because a lot of times people just go into it with this second guessing nature. They don't have anything necessarily to compare it to, real live examples, people that are actually doing it at a level that they wanna to get to. So breaking it down for them and showing them how simple it can be, I think is a big aha moment for a lot of people because they don't really see, they, they overcomplicate it in their minds and they form these giant pictures of what it's supposed to be. And then you break it down for them and it's like, wow, I didn't, you know, like this is so much more achievable than I thought. Um, that and I think some of the research things. There's some really cool things with research now, just like the mindset of it and understanding what makes a winning product and being able to research that people see that. And you know, some people come out of these masterminds and hit winning products and start making money right away because they see that and it hits and it clicks for them. And then like they realize, oh, this is all I have to do. Like I just need to start doing it this way. Yeah, and then alternately, so people, uh, you know, there, there, there's a simplicity to, you know, to getting started in this. Obviously, that's what makes this the most accessible opportunity of our generation, probably. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's a lot of people I see on the groups who will say, okay, I set up a store, I, I spent 50 bucks in ads, I haven't seen any sales yet. Um, you know, where in your mind are people getting stuck with e-commerce? Where, where are the, the things that are stopping people from you know, maybe making a few sales, maybe losing a couple hundred dollars to getting to the point where they have like a sustainable income and, and that they, something that can actually change their lives. Yeah, that's, I think there's two things to that for me really when I think about it. Number one, the easy answer is just like having the persistence to stick with it. Um, because I know that, you know, a really cool story. I get to hear cool stories at these masterminds. One story that I heard was of a guy who spent like, 
five, six thousand dollars testing products and didn't have a clear winner, like didn't wasn't making any money. He was doing this over a few months, like just putting money in, spent, you know, five grand, which already right there is a great story because like you said, I see people in the group, oh man, I spent fifty bucks, I spent a hundred dollars, I'm not like killing it yet, making thousand dollar days, and it's like that wrong mindset, but this guy stuck with it, stuck with it. Eventually, he found something. After spending 5,000 on ads and not having a winner, he found the winner and did over a million dollars in sales the next six months after that. So like number one, I think, is that persistence that you need to stick with it. But number two, like even going back further than that, I think most people don't have a plan. So they get started really randomly. Like they're just, you know, finding stuff and kind of like throwing darts in the dark. They're just hoping to hit the bullseye and see if something sticks. So they don't really know when to stick with it, when to quit. They get frustrated, they get burnt out because they never actually had like a clear strategy to let them know that they're on the right trajectory if they just stick with it, you know? Yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And this kind of leads into um, some of the things that, that we're potentially working on. So, so we'll get to that in a minute. But I wanted to ask, uh, you know, what, what in your mind is the current, you know, you're a drop shipping expert, right? That, that's sort of where your expertise, I think, has, is that mm -hmm. safe to say? Yeah, I think it's safe that's, to say. That's yeah. really where the Ecom Empire's brand has been built. Uh, like, what is the current state of drop shipping in your mind? Current state of drop shipping is still opportunity, but opportunity, I think, that needs to be a little bit more refined. You know, because it, it certainly has gotten more challenging. Everybody's bread and butter is, is basically Facebook and Instagram as well. But, you know, two, three years ago, people that were Facebook marketing then understand it was a little bit easier because there was less competition, it was cheaper, and now there's more competition, it's more expensive, there's been a whole flood of courses out there that show people to do the same exact thing, you know, and so it's like, I think that the opportunity is still amazing, and I see that as I go out and I meet these people that are all across the world doing this right now, it's new success stories being created all the time, but it, it requires, I think, a little bit more of a strategic approach now a little bit more of a brand mindset of a business mindset not like a quick cash grab mindset yeah so let's talk about that a little bit so uh, you know just to announce a little bit we're uh, Nick and I are joining a team of all-stars uh, and we're going to put together a, an amazing six-part free course uh, that leverages the unique skills of six different e-commerce heavy hitters uh, we're really excited to be to be delivering this uh, over the next couple months. We're going to be uh, making some announcements about it. But I wanted to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about like why we brought Nick into this specifically. So so first of all, uh, you know he is uh, you know he's someone who's probably helped more people in the e-commerce game th than than a lot of people. In in my experience, he's 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 helped the most. He's you know he's always taking the time on his groups, uh, and he also has a really strong understanding of that entry level strategy that people need. Uh, in the game. So what I wanted to know from you is like what what do you want to bring to the course that we're doing together? What what sort of we'll talk a little bit about what we've asked you to cover and then talk a little bit about your specific strategy going into that. Yeah, that's that's great. I think for me in a simple way, I want to demystify it for people because I think that there's so much information and there's so much out there and you have a lot of brand new people that come to it being given this idea that you don't really need to do anything or that like it just all will magically fall into place if you open up a store and start putting products in it. And you know, while there is a, a magic element to Shopify because you start making sales and it's like you're just making money on a computer screen from people you don't know and it's kind of this magical feeling, but at the same time, you really need to like understand the strategy. And I think like you mentioned, that's, that's what I'm really good at. Um, that's what I've helped a lot of people break through because like there's a lot out there on advertising and this and that, but you know, your advertisement's only gonna be as good as your strategy and your marketing angle that you're taking. And so for me, you know, I didn't come from a background where I just jumped into Shopify and like, okay, just start throwing products up. I've studied all the great marketers like Dan Kennedy and Jay Abraham and Gary Howell, you know, like some of these people that are legends. And like I've applied that to what I do into creating strategy and having a plan and how you're researching your niche and your product and like being careful and, and strategic about what you're doing so that it makes sense for people in a way that helps them have them breakthroughs and realize their own potential and see their own opportunities that are like literally right there in front of them. Very cool. So what do you think is the, the central most important thing when picking a niche 
in general? Like, so when you, or when you talk about, or, or maybe back up even before a niche, about strategy, like what is that, that core of the strategy? Is it, you know, and when I'm saying strategy, I'm talking about general store versus, uh, you know, versus a niche store versus, mm-hmm. you know, wh- where do you think right now the lowest hanging fruit, not just the lowest hanging fruit, but the lowest hang- hanging fruit with some sustainability uh, is at this time? Yeah, there's a couple things that go into strategy from like what type of store, like you mentioned, um, what type of business model, are you just drop shipping, are you doing print on demand, what type of brand identity are you creating? So there's definitely a few parts that go into it. Um, I think the low hanging fruit right now is, I, I mean, it's, it's tough to say in terms of like, for strategy, I think that the low hanging fruit is still finding a really passionate niche and kind of creating a, a hybrid type of store around a passionate niche. And then whether you're doing print on demand or drop shipping, but still for me, e-commerce is all about finding a good product and matching it to an audience. And so like for me, the low hanging fruit, because there's a lot of product ideas and opportunities out there, but I think where it really, you're gonna make the quickest money in terms of not like get rich quick, but where are you gonna find success quickly is when you can really uncover passionate niches so you can kind of build a brand identity around that and find really good products that you know they'll be interested in. Very cool. So uh, this is, I'm gonna jump back a little bit here. There's one question I missed that I thought was, that I thought was really important to get at because you see thousands of e-commerce entrepreneurs flooding into the space through your group. You see the newbie questions, you see the advanced people who are posting. I wanted to ask you, you know, there's got to be a big section of the population of people who understand that there's a massive opportunity. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've tested a little bit and been bounced out of it. Maybe they're literally just sitting on the sidelines and haven't done anything yet. What do you think are the key factors that sort of hold people back from success? I think we talked about this. You said strategy, right? I mean, that's a great question. Yeah, but hold people back, you know, it's kind of a different answer because I think it's mindset in a lot of ways. And, you know, it's interesting because people always want to be like, oh, give me the good stuff, you know, give me the secrets, give me like the million dollar tip. But honestly, mindset, in my opinion, is where it starts in any business for any entrepreneur. So I think a lot of people join these groups and they are looking for something and they see that like, oh, there's a lot of buzz around this, a lot of opportunity, but have they necessarily changed their own mindset yet? 56,000 people in e-com empires, you know, but how many of them are actually actively treating this like a business opportunity? Right, like how many of our, how many of them are actively out there researching products and systems and ideas and niches and testing things and putting together stores and spending money on ads? Like, you know, how many people are actually doing that? Probably a very small percentage. And I think it's because at something, some point, somewhere in their mind, hasn't necessarily clicked yet that this is achievable for them to do. Because in my mind, I'm like, why would you not want to do it? You know, you, if you sit down with somebody and you convince them that they can make a hundred grand a month with a store, whether that's over a short period of time or a long period of time, you can build a store to a hundred grand a month in sales. Who wouldn't want to do that? Yeah. You know, like, come on. Especially like, you when you can't compare tell that me. with like brick and mortar <laughs> business opportunities where it's like, you could own a subway franchise for, you know, for this much initial investment, you'll go this much into debt and maybe you'll eke out 60 grand of profit yeah, a year exactly. in order to do that. Even better know? point. Exactly. You can do this with literally maybe, you know, a couple thousand dollars up front to, to start. And some people have done it with less, you know, every there's some people have done it with more. There's different barriers there, but compared to normal business opportunities. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's insane. So to think that you could you could build that type of lifestyle and achieve your dreams and your goals, whatever they are. For me, it's traveling the world and helping others for somebody else that may be buying their dream home. You know, like um, I saw somebody recently, John Mack, another big e-commerce dude posting about buying his dream home, getting it built from the ground up. Like who wouldn't want that if they believed it was achievable for them? You know what I mean? So I think that's the click that a lot of people aren't seeing it in a way yet that they believe that they have a real system that can take them to that outcome. So what are your dreams? This is something that I struggle with as an entrepreneur. Like I got a family, I got a home. I, I want I, I know I want more travel. I want more financial freedom, but like, you know, you're in, you're in a position where, you know, you're, you're, you're in a limitless business. You're mm-hmm. having success business wise. You're seeing all these other people succeed. Where, where are, what are your dreams for, for what you want to get out of e-commerce? Man, that's well for me, you know, I think it's interesting. I take somewhat of a different approach, you know, like, 
to me, happiness, there's only a certain amount of money you need to fulfill like what you want to do. And then after that, it's all excess. You know, so for me right now, it's really about the experience. I really want to travel. I really want to have an impact. Uh, I want to build e-com empires to 100,000 members in the short term and really continue to do these masterminds and help thousands of people find this type of success. Um, with e-com empires, I really want to use that as a brand and a platform to start working in some of these developing countries that are like really emerging countries in Asia and some of the European and even Africa and South America, like some of these emerging countries that aren't considered like tier one traffic countries, you know? Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity as e-commerce emerges and I would love to be part of that. Like for me, really big vision um, where the dream is like, you know, stores and Shopify is really cool. But for me, like I really want to have an impact on as big a level as I can. And there's a real high that comes from helping people, right? When you, oh, when you have sure. people, like how many DMs do you get? Like how many DMs have you got <laughs> from people saying, hey man, first sale happened, I'm on fire. Like that must be a real infectious experience. It is. You know, like, first sale to, I've had people message me and say, you know, I got my dream car. I've moved into the apartment I wanted to. I'm traveling now. Uh, you know, like I had somebody's recently, like a week or two ago, they had like their first $47,000 day or something crazy in a day. And he messaged me, he's like, man, he was like, bro, your course was the turning point And now like I'm doing this. And yeah, for me, it's not only motivational for myself to keep helping more people, but also the ripple effect is amazing because like you're having an impact in one person's life. And now this person could then end up having an impact in all these other people's lives and other people's lives. And so like the, the ripple impact of what you're doing and then when you go places and you meet people and they're like, man, you have no idea like how like your course or your group, like it changed everything for me. And these are people now that are achieving things. They're making money. They're providing better for their family or themselves or yeah, it's, it is kind of a high. It's, it's addicting. I want to keep doing that. And I, 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 and you know, as you're speaking about this, it makes me it, like when I, when I walk through the world and I see people who are eking out a living, working at Starbucks or grinding away in an office job or something, it almost feels like the world is getting like more and more difficult for, for families and for people mm. in general in order to get by. Like the things that we used to get by with, like our parents, what they'd have, they'd have one job, they'd get a house, they'd, mm -hmm. the, the, the wife maybe wouldn't have to work. They yeah. could, you know, raise the kids, all these things. But like that is increasingly harder and harder to do. So it's like, it's sort of imperative, I feel like, that in this, that as many people as can possibly do it, take a shot with, with these kinds of things in order to, you know, manifest a life that they're going to be happy with. I agree, but in two ways, actually. In one way that, yeah, and it is getting harder. And people, I see this all the time now, unfortunately, connected to this in different ways, friends, family. Uh, the next generation up, older people than me, you know, are getting out of work when they're like at an older age where the job market is saturated. They're trying to compete. They're 50, 60 years old and now they don't have a job. And what are they going to do? You know, but I look at that as well as an entrepreneur. There's so many people I see in drop shipping and they'll have like a good month. And I love when people have success, but they'll have like, say, first $50,000 a month. And they're like, man, I'm balling, you know, like I'm a baller now. I'm going to go out and spend this money. I'm going to go get some crazy stuff. And like, you know, and it's, it's, of course, you you want to celebrate the victories but at the same time like you know I'm 33 years old for example I might have a really great balling year but guess what I God willing I'm gonna be alive for another 50 years on this planet so like you really need to have a strategy you need to be working towards something bigger and better because you're not gonna be running the same Shopify store for the next 50 years of your life you know so it's like always constantly I think about finding something and taking steps towards the next level all about strategy, this guy. And, and, and that brings <laughs> us to like the final piece here. We'll just talk a little bit more about the e-commerce all-star secrets, which is the six part mini course that we're creating. We're going to reveal the rest of the all-stars through the course of a, a series of interviews here. Um, but, but you're handling strategy. You're handling that, that initial piece of, uh, you know, with the courses, the, the, the idea for the course will let you know is this, uh, is the fact that we want to cover, we, we want to get as many people off the sidelines as possible. We want to get people, who have uh, maybe started in, in e-commerce and have been bounced out by it. We want to get people who haven't started, who have an idea, who know that there's this opportunity, but they just haven't taken that leap forward. Uh, and so that, those are the first two audience segments. You know, we're going to be bringing on some all-stars with some really advanced level skills as well. So this course is really going to be designed for a broad spectrum of people. Um, and it's going to benefit a lot of people, I, I really think. But to me, Nick handling the 
uh, the, the initial part of, of this course is is absolutely essential because we want to get we want to provide content which is like the, the the best practices way to kind of get in the game. Um, and so talk a little bit about what you're going to bring to the to your your part in the, the the free mini class. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm bringing everything that I can, and I think that. Uh, anybody who knows me knows that that's kind of my approach. I don't really want to hold anything back because I think the opportunity is massive. And, you know, there's a lot of different facets and some of them are more sexy than others when you talk about scaling ads and this and that. But, you know, I think with research, it's still at the most foundational level. That's what builds great brands. That's what builds great businesses is finding a hot niche, finding a really good product. And then once you have that, knowing how to put all these other components in there, having the whole system. So, yeah, I'm going to bring everything you know one of the advantages that I have is not only from my own experience and my own testing but now being part of Ecom Empires and having this network you know I, I've seen and talked with and done so much through my own and through other people now people I've worked with people I've networked with people I've seen talked work you know so like all of that constantly I'm putting it all into the the boiling pot and distilling the best stuff that I can so that that's what my plan is with the the mini course is to just churn out the best stuff for people. Nice. And, and if I, and the, the thing that I'm most excited about your mini course is that you're going to actually start a store mm. and document it. That's super, super exciting. We, we won't get in, like we, we're not going to reveal your niche. Uh, you know, that, that's going to be something for, for later on. But, uh, but I'm really excited that there's going to be like a live example. You're getting in the game. You're going to leverage all the best practices that you've sort of gleaned uh, over the past couple years and actually put it into practice. It's super exciting. Yeah, me too. That's one of the things that made Ecom Empires such a hit uh, is because that's how I did it when I started at Case Study Store instead of just slides actually showing people in a store. And so I'm excited too. I haven't done one since that. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it'll be really good. It'll be good stuff. People learn really well when they can see it that way. Nice. So... Uh, you know, I, uh, I don't have my eye patch on right now, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but the way I felt pulling this course together, you know, I'm a, I'm a comic book nerd, and the way I felt putting this course together was like Nick Fury, uh, putting together a team of the Avengers, and I just had to ask if, if you had to pick one, uh, one Avenger in this case, you know, you're, you're kind of the first all-star, so who would you say you actually are in, in this case? Uh, well, I guess I'm going with Captain, Captain America. Um, Captain kind of, Ecom, let's Cap call him. <laughs> yeah, Captain Ecom, the one that kind of um, bring, kind of rounds it all up in the beginning, you know. So I don't necessarily have the uh, the same Captain America look, and I'm missing my shield, but the same kind of same kind of attitude of you know really out there for the best reasons of trying to to really help people and be part of the team spirit of getting everybody together to to put this foundation together that's really going to help a lot of people achieve you know, their goals and their dreams. And if I'm not mistaken, Captain America is the strategist of the team too. He's, the, he's probably the lead strategist. He's <laughs> the one that, that keeps people calm and keeps people moving forward. So I'm super happy to have you on board. Yeah, I'm excited uh, about it. Yeah, man, it's going to be a lot of fun. You can catch Nick also at eCommerce Mastery Live where he's going to be on stage in Barcelona. We're going to be having an absolute blast there. Uh, and it's around that time. We're not releasing the date just yet, but it's a, just before that event is when we're going to be releasing the uh, e-commerce all-star secrets. So stay tuned for that, everyone. I want to thank you uh, for this very special interview today. And uh, let's have fun tomorrow in Atlanta. And uh, it's going to be a hell of a summer. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Thanks Cheers. for having me here.